you often feel stuck between wanting more and feeling guilty about not being satisfied with what you have? Are emotional triggers holding you back from achieving your dreams? Do you struggle with setting big goals without seeking other people's approval? If you answer yes to any of these questions, keep watching this video because we're going to explore how emotional intelligence and sophisticated empowerment can transform your life. Hello, Sophisticates. Welcome back to Brains and Bobbles with Davina Dandridge. If you haven't already, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an empowering episode. Today, we're exploring a topic that resonates with so many of us, the satisfaction conundrum. How do we find contentment in our current lives while also dreaming big and striving for more? Satisfaction and ambition aren't the same thing. You know, ambition is all about wanting to achieve something bigger, while satisfaction is being happy with where you are. But these two things and two ways of thinking often clash because pushing for more can, it can bring tension into your life. It can bring stress and especially the worry of not knowing what's going to happen. While on the flip side, being content can lead to complacency and it can have you stuck is what it really does. I mean, you can stay stuck in your default behaviors like people pleasing, like negative talk, like staying in bad relationships and financial insecurity and just unfulfilled desires. Like your desires haven't been met for any reason besides something that you have to do for the good of the family or for someone else. But finding a balance between being ambitious and content, it can be rough. I've struggled with that in the, in the past, but it's totally worth it to examine what we're going to talk about today so that you can find a balance between these two strong ways of thinking. When you know what's important to you, you can set achievable goals. I mean, nothing is too big and you practice gratitude to make sure that you're on the right track and so that you are appreciative of the things that you have already done. But, you know, you can have the best of both worlds, feeling satisfied and driven at the same time. So there's this study in the Journal of Social, Psychological and Personality Science that shows people who balance ambition and contentment tend to be happier and more fulfilled. I'm going to show you how to do this. OK, so the first thing is you don't need permission from anyone to pursue life fulfillment. God wants us to be content with our blessings while also pursuing the greatness he has in store for us. Proverbs 16, 3 reminds us, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. This means we can be grateful for our present and still plan for a bigger and better future. Our emotions play a major part in our satisfaction or our dissatisfaction or even our contentment. You know, your level of satisfaction often has to do with your emotional triggers, but not all triggers are bad. I know it sounds like they should be because the word triggers can be triggering, but it depends on what it's triggering. So yes, many triggers can keep you stuck and feeling hopeless if they are not addressed. However, some triggers especially the ones from the past, can serve as motivation and inspiration that prompts you to plan for the future that you desire. You don't have to settle for where you are right now as a default. As Brene Brown says, owning your story can be hard, not nearly as difficult as spending our lives running from it. So embrace the past, embrace those things that you thought might have been a detriment or a hindrance in the past. And you don't have to examine them and work on your emotions so you can turn them into something that motivates you to do something bigger in your future. So let's own our stories and use them to fuel our dreams. So my goal is to show you how to use emotional intelligence as a tool to lead you to sophisticated empowerment. This journey involves understanding emotional triggers and transforming from a triggered responder to an emotional planner. 
That's the end goal because an emotional planner can handle situations, anticipate situations, and plan for the best outcome in the future. You may think contentment is the goal because you've already overcome so much in your life. Maybe you've overcome poverty and you got where you are right now on your own. Maybe you're like me and you get satisfied, uh, satisfaction from taking care of other people. However, <laughs> this trait of satisfying everyone else has turned into people pleasing and you're okay with putting yourself on the back burner because you're content with the idea that you're doing good for other people. But let me tell you, that hurts you more than it helps someone else. Or this could be you. You are finally in a place of peace in your life. You've survived some bad relationships and a list of terrible incidences and situations, and you're satisfied with just not having a lot of relationships right now. That's okay with you. In this journey towards balancing ambition and contentment, my book, Brains and Bibles Do What Works For You, is a valuable guide. It offers practical strategies to harness emotional intelligence so that you can set achievable goals and embrace those goals by embracing gratitude. Get ready to stop seeking approval and start curating the life you desire. Get your copy today and take the first steps towards becoming an empowered and confident woman. Being self-aware allows you to identify what triggers your emotions. You're not left in the dark wondering how you're going to respond when you walk into a situation. But reflecting on past experiences and understanding how they influence your present reactions is the key to moving forward. Not all triggers are negative. Some can motivate and inspire you to dream even bigger. I pray to dream bigger. The bigger the dream, the better life because I am striving for something. I'm not just accepting where I am right now. But a lot of times there are bigger influences in our life than just focusing on what we want in the future. Family histories of beliefs and behaviors, they've influenced your ability to think in a certain way. You know, you've seen generations of generations of people in your life either have bad marriages or not get married or be content in working a job that they're not happy with when they have so many dreams and talents that they could harness and have a different type of life. Well, you don't have to let that be you just because that has been in your family history. Has your life been consumed by myths and poor thinking, those influences that come from some of our friends and family? Well, self-awareness allows you to reset your emotional computer. And, you know, technology is something you have to embrace. So if you're not already embracing technology, you need to get on it. But let's think of our emotions or our emotional fortitude as a supercomputer. Like, an, like a computer, emotional triggers are like viruses. They destroy the good information and leave you filled with data that you can't even use data that doesn't even answer the questions of your future and data that keeps you from pursuing a life that you desire. Your emotions impact your thinking and your thinking impacts your behavior and your behavior determines your environment. So being satisfied with your default emotions and how you respond to people in situations is part of a fixed way of thinking that doesn't lead to the benefits that you gain from personal development, from working on yourself for yourself. You develop with personal development, the desire to be more, okay? So challenge yourself to become more, to do more and to have more. I urge you to think of yourself, only you right now. I mean, take three seconds to really think about your life and your happiness. You know, it takes time to discover what you want, but you have to look at your life and see what you want it to be like two years from now or 10 years from now. Imagine where you will live. What will you eat on a daily basis? You know, do you live in warm weather? Do you live on an island? You know, or do you live in another country? Who will be with you? How will you look? 
Will you finally be fit like you want to be? <laughs> you know, look, you may say, Davina, all this dream and talk, this sounds frivolous. You know, like, what am I going to do with this? I have some real stuff going on in my life. How is this thinking whether my teeth are fixed or not going to help me? <laughs> well, first of all, what you desire for yourself is never frivolous. You deserve and require time to contemplate your life. I'm encouraging you to dream in a way that even the smallest aspect of your life is something that you desire, like what you're going to eat on a daily basis. And I want you to dream without editing it. Your dreams are yours and your dreams are unique. Don't edit it. It is what it is. We are so accustomed to finding our desires in what we think is normal or what we think other people will accept about us. And that's not really what we desire. That's how you get stuck. That thinking about what everyone else is doing or what they want, that will keep you stuck. Your fulfillment is unique to your life, inspired by your past and your desire for your future. But if you don't think about your future, how are you ever going to get there? Let your inner passions drive you. Not external rewards, not the money you're going to get, but really what you feel like you want to do. What makes you happy? What you would do if you didn't even need to get paid for it? What is that thing? Let that drive you. Things that make you smile, things that make you happy, let that drive you. While money is important, if you're doing what you enjoy, not only will money come to you, but the relationships that you want as well, because you'll be a much happier person. But at the same time, you have to realize that life is not a fantasy. That's a quote from my dad. My dad was a big dreamer. Ever since I can remember, he would always sit me down and say, Vivi, I want to do this, or I'm thinking about doing this. And that's what inspires me in my life right now. And he did some great things in his life. And coming from where he came from, it is a, a, a wonderful story of resilience and strength using emotional intelligence because he was born during the Great Depression. He was one of 10 children during the Great Depression. And he was the son of a sharecropper, one of 10 children during the Great Depression in North Carolina. So for all intents and purposes, he should have stayed at home and worked with his dad to eke out a meager existence. And then where would I be? And where would my daughter be? If he hadn't found the strength to go ahead and forget about what was expected, forget about what other people wanted him to do and do what he wanted to do, my life would have been totally different and I may not even exist it. Okay, because his dad wanted him to stay. You know that, right? But he had bigger dreams. Really quickly, he became so much more than his circumstances. He came, became so much more than what society would have had him to be. He enlisted in the army at 17. He fought in the Korean War. He traveled the world. He became a businessman multiple times. He was a real estate broker. He ran for the mayor of the city of Detroit. And that was before I was born. But he was an inventor. He was a licensed contractor. And he became a truck driver at 70 years old. He didn't get on the road until he was 70 years old. I could go on and on about the things that my dad did. And that's just a small portion because overcoming things in his life, he did that multiple times as well. So my point is he dreamed big and he accomplished big things. He instilled the idea of self-fulfilling goal setting in my life. And I pass it on to my daughter. You can do this too. But you have to take the time to set goals. You got to get out of those triggered emotions and instead apply logic and plan to achieve the dreams you have for your life. But you must start with self-awareness. Once you are aware of your emotional triggers, you can use them for meaningful goals. Philippians 3.14 says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
This scripture encourages us to strive for the highest potential grounded in our faith. This allows you to think about breaking down big ambitions. So no dream is too big. How you manage it is all that it takes. So you have to sit down, break them down into small bits, manageable milestones. This keeps you motivated and it reduces stress because if you break it down in small bits, I have to do this to get to point A and then to get to point B and point C, et cetera, et cetera. Then you start celebrating those small victories. And before you know it, you have met a huge milestone and you're on your way. And that just emboldens you and encourages you to keep going and dream bigger and do bigger and bigger things. Curate a life that reflects your true self, not what others expect of you. As you set and pursue your goals, remember to prioritize what works for you not what works for other people. Again, in my book, Brains and Bobbles, Do What Works For You, I emphasize the importance of designing a life that aligns with your values and your desires. You know, click the link in the description and buy your copy today. You will not regret it. Strive to balance, aim high, and enjoy the present. Pursue your goals while appreciating the moment that you're in right now. If these ideas resonate with you, I invite you to join my five-day emotional reset challenge. This challenge is designed to help you identify your emotional triggers, harness them as strengths, and plan effectively for your future. Sign up today and take the first step towards sophisticated empowerment. Remember, satisfaction and ambition they can coexist. By understanding your emotions and leveraging emotional intelligence, you can live a content and ambitious life simultaneously. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and share this video with anyone who needs to hear this message. Let's build a community of empowered, emotionally intelligent women striving for greatness together. Until next time.